is using a grid to start your drawing or painting consider cheating let's investigate that Does the thought of using a grid or something similar make you feel guilty, like you are perhaps cheating or trying to mislead? There is a debate, a debate on what constitutes art, which has been raging for a very, very long time. This debate centers on the use of the grid method as a means to imprint an image onto an artist's medium, whether it be fabric, drawing paper, or a painter's canvas. On one side of the debate, proponents of the grid method point out that it is just a tool, much like a carpenter's ruler, a painter's thumb or viewing frame, or a sculptor's calipers. On the other side of the debate, opponents claim that it is cheating and that a true artist would not use a grid. But who is to say what is or is not art. According to LumenLearning.com under Boundless Art History, it states, Art is a highly diverse range of human activities engaged in creating visual, auditory, or performed artifacts, artworks, that express the author's imaginative or technical skill and are intended to be appreciated for their beauty or emotional power. The oldest documented forms of art are visual arts, which include images or objects in fields like painting, sculpture, printmaking, photography, and other visual media. So considering this definition of art, it states that the objective is to create something that is intended to be appreciated for its beauty or emotional power, and that the creator is expressing his or her imaginative or technical skill. It would be difficult to argue against this definition of art. So the question is, does the use of the grid method fall under such a definition? Well, if you consider that the use of the grid as a tool requires practice and is an acquired skill, and that the use of a grid as a tool is to create something to be appreciated, then that would certainly fall under the umbrella of being art. Note that one of the oldest documented forms of art includes photography. Here, the artist is capturing an exact likeness of a subject using a tool called a camera. This is certainly art if the photographer aims to create pleasing images by way of subject selection, framing, lighting, etc. The artist that uses the grid method for drawing or painting is using a tool to capture a likeness of a subject. As to it being an exact likeness as in photography, the pencil or painting artist actually has to do much more work. For the pencil artist, there is shading, blending, erasing, and detailing that needs to be done to develop the original sketch into a near exact likeness of the original subject. Arguably then, if a photographer can be considered creating art, wouldn't it be more so for the pencil or painting artist? It would seem that history is also on the side of those who use the grid method to create art. According to several reputable sources on the subject, the grid method in some form or fashion has been used by artists since 5000 BCE. For instance, according to John A. R. Legon, the Egyptians had a set of fixed laws constituting a canon of proportions that defined the proportions between different parts of the human body. This canon of proportions was maintained over many centuries through the use of the artist's grid. There is a link in the description area of this video where you can visit the museum site of Digital Egypt for Universities 
and see many photos of old stone tablets and papyrus that include the use of the grid for drawing. I'm sure we can all agree, considering the incredible work such as building of the pyramids, that these ancient ones were truly artists in their creations. Their use of the grid does not diminish that fact. Thousands of years later, we are still in awe of the remnants discovered of this ancient civilization. Much evidence has been discovered that shows that artists over the centuries since ancient Egypt continue to use the grid method for their art creations. Leon Battista Alberti, 1404-1472, is attributed to having written the first general treatise on the laws of perspective in 1435 called Della Pittura. His perspective frame was the most successful of drawing devices invented, which would later be used by greats such as Vincent van Gogh 400 years later. This is a variation of the grid method. Albrecht Durer, 1471 to 1528, is attributed as having created a grid system. According to the Library of Congress, under the heading Share the Perspective of a Genius. You can find the link down in the description below. Leonardo da Vinci, 1452 to 1519, in 1481, was commissioned by the monks of San Donato a Scopero near Florence to paint an altarpiece celebrating the adoration of the Magi. Here we find that Leonardo da Vinci, considered an artist and genius, used the grid for this work. William Salmon was a prolific writer on a wide range of topics including art. In London, 1672, he published a book titled Polygraphis, or The Arts of Drawing, Engraving, Etching, Limning, Painting, Washing, Varnishing, Gilding, Coloring, Dyeing, Beautifying, and Perfuming. No doubt long titles weren't discouraged back then. It was his most successful work, having sold 15,000 copies by 1701. On page 36, chapter 20, he discusses the subject of proportion in recreating a subject, giving instructions on how to use the grid to accomplish this. Vincent van Gogh, 1853 to 1890, was a Dutch post-impressionist painter, one of the most famous in the history of Western art. In a letter to his brother in 1882, he mentions owning a perspective frame, such as the one discussed earlier. Here is a sketch by Van Gogh on using the perspective frame, which is a form of the grid method. The use of a tool like the grid would fall under the broader subject of using any kind of perspective tool. For example, Johannes Vermeer, 1632 to 1675, created paintings that are among the most revered in the history of art. Some have argued that he used a device to plan his compositions using something like a camera obscura. Evidence has been found in the form of pinholes that exist in many of his interior scenes at the vanishing point of his perspective system where strings would be attached to guide him. In 2013, a documentary titled Tim's Vermeer, directed by Teller and produced by his stage partner Pin Gillette along with Farley Ziegler, chronicled the efforts of inventor Tim Jennison testing his theory that Vermeer painted with the help of optical devices. Several observations were discovered that point to it likely that Vermeer had mechanical help in creating his hyper-accurate paintings. Now that it is established that many of the great artists of history used the grid, or some form of grid, or they used other devices and mechanical means to assist in their recreations, might this still be the case today among our more modern artists? An internet search produced several artists that have demonstrated using the grid. A short list is here. Chuck Close, known for his photorealistic paintings, used the grid to get the images onto canvas at various sizes. 
M.C. Escher is one of the world's most famous graphic artists, and he was known to have used the grid in some of his work. Lee Hammond, referred to as the Queen of Art by her publisher, Northlight Books, wrote a book, How to Draw Lifelike Portraits from Photographs, where she teaches the use of the grid for accurately capturing your subject details prior to shading and blending. The Big Book of Realistic Drawing Secrets by Carrie Stewart Parks and Rick Parks also demonstrate the use of the grid. In fact, they also share a cool trick of placing the grid on a light box and then putting the drawing paper on top. This way, you don't have to erase the grid lines later. And artist Mike Sibley in his book, Drawing from Line to Line, also teaches the grid method as a means of image transfer, adding some adjustments and tricks you can use with the grid. The evidence is clear that artists have, for centuries, used various means for reproducing objects into art, including using the grid method and variations thereof. And by using these methods, they are not considered less of an artist, nor are they considered having cheated, but rather are praised for their eye-pleasing artwork. So the next time you find yourself in a debate with someone who suggests to you that using a grid to create your artwork is cheating, rather than argue with them, just share this video. And with that, I end with asking that you please hit the thumbs up like button. And if you haven't done so already, click the subscribe and notification bell. Thank you for watching.